Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. This video is going to be about the design, building and flying of the VT100 airplane. I'm very excited because it's my first video in the channel and um, with that all said, let's get started. First, I'd like to talk about the design phase. I've designed the airplane in Fusion 360 in a theme of uh, straight lines and uh, cubic shape. The airplane's wingspan is 1 meter and its length is uh, 75 centimeters. It's built out of a uh, curved uh, foam board and uh, I'll say more about it later. The airplane is designed to be a test trick for autonomous flying using the VTR2 flight computer. It will have its own video, but for short, it's a custom PCB that handles all the flying and autonomous operations during flight. It also logs tons of data such as sensor readings, uh, calculated orientation and uh, outputs to this kind of servos which control the control surfaces of the airplane and uh, all this log is uh, after a flight uh, used for a fair success analysis and also to see how well the computer performed during flight. For full autonomous flights, the airplane will have uh, wheels too, but uh, for now uh, we're just testing if it flies, so uh, there are no wheels. Also, maybe it will be launched from a bungee launcher, but uh, that is still the design phase, so nothing about it yet. Okay, so with that, we've covered the design phase. Now let's move to the building phase. Firstly, I've drawn the airframe uh, layout on the foam board and added the slots in which the foam was uh, removed to uh, bend the foam to create the airplane shape. After I finished drawing, I started to cut the foam in the marked places and started folding it. Now, when we have the body built, it's time to cut out the wing and the horizontal and vertical stabilizers. The wing has a half a meter long carbon fiber rod glued in a slot in the middle of it and uh, as you see later in the footage it was better to have a 75 centimeter one but uh, it worked so it's okay. After the horizontal and the vertical stabilizers were glued down it was time to find a way to connect the wing to the airframe body. So uh, the solution I found uh, as you can see is not ideal but it works though it's kind of sensitive. The airplane uses four 9 gram servos, uh, one for each uh, control surface. Two are mounted inside of the airframe and their motion is uh, transformed to the tail, as you saw uh, earlier. The other two servos are mounted on the wings and are used uh, to control the ailerons. The airplane uses 2200 kV uh, Brothers motor with a 20 amp speed controller and uh, that's it for the building phase. Okay, so now for the fun part, flat footage. This was the first flight of the V100. As you saw, it wasn't a great flight because the center of mass was too much to the back and I always had to fight the plane. After that, I moved the battery wheel to the front and we went for flight too.
flight was successful and the airplane flew well. With that, you maybe saw that uh, there was a big wiggle on the Y axis. Uh, this was caused by an uh, over aggressive elevator and uh, it's an easy fix. To determine orientation, the flight computer uses a Medwick Quaternion update filter that I wrote and uh, it had a bug in the first two flights. After I found the bug, uh, I fixed it and then we went for flight 3. The first two flights were a test to find out if the design of the airplane is working. So after we finished to see if it works, it was time to try some autonomous functions. Flight 3 tested the stability functions of the airplane. For stability, the flight computer runs a simple PID algorithm that had two problems. The first was mistuned PID gains and that will be fixed. The second problem was the mount of the flight computer to the airframe. The truth is that there is no mount and it's just uh, sit inside of there and uh, it has a lot of wiggle in the movement room. As you can see in this part, the airplane uh, thinks that it's in, in one orientation and the body is moving in another way. It tries to correct upwards and it's actually a bit to the side. The solution is to 3D print a mount for the flight computer and uh, it will be done for the next flight. That is all for today. I hope you liked it. If you have any questions, you can comment them below and I'll answer them. Thank you for watching and see you next time.